I think uh, almost everyone has heard about Viagra. Viagra was launched 25 years ago, and since then, no real innovations has entered the market of erectile dysfunction. And now I'm going to talk about how DICOT intends to change that. Uh, the subject is quite stigmatized. This is not something we normally talk about. But the fact is that over half of all men experience potency problems in some degrees. We see a positive trend that uh, more and more tend to seek help, seek care and get treatments for this. Uh, but actually among those who get treatment to take a drug, half of them stop the treatment, so they drop out. And why is that? So there are a few reasons. The key ones are that over a third of the one who tries do not get the desired effect or do not get any effect at all. Uh, it's also a issue that you need to plan your sexual activities with your partners because the drugs available today, you need to take them half an hour, an hour before, or take them daily. Um, and also there is uh, side effects, so many of them who try, um, they uh, stop because they have unwanted side effects. Uh, and the market value today is then only 5 billion US dollars. And yes, it's a big number, but compared to the prevalence, it's quite small. So there's very lot we, uh, a lot we can do here uh, with the new drug, modern drug, addressing the shortcomings of available medicines. We have a drug candidate, we call it Lib01, with unique properties. Uh, it's a completely new patented molecule, uh, targeted to serve three purposes to uh, surpasses sure today's treatments. And we tend to develop a drug that helps all patients. As said, so many today do not have any choice, they don't, don't have access to a drug that actually helps them. We want to provide a drug with a long lasting effect, uh, like a bi-weekly, weekly treatment, uh, so you don't have to worry about having this problem, you can live a normal life with your partner. And we also want to develop a drug with a very good safety profile, safety profile, so no unwanted side effects. Uh, this would mean to reclaim well-being for the men and their partner that are affected today. This would mean a lot. Uh, and, and how can I claim that these three aspects are achievable with Lib01? Uh, we have been doing a lot of research and development on this molecule for several years and all study results talk the same story. We have from the beginning, it originates this from a um, folk medicine use where these properties were reported. We have also seen see, see this in um, the early academic studies that was done by the founder of uh, DICOT, Professor Jarl Wikberg. And we have also seen it in, uh, I counted actually, over 20 different preclinical studies in validated models. So uh, more, more specific to help all the patients, we, we see that we have a new mode of action nothing compared to uh, today available treatments, and this really opens a new door in this medical field to be able to address the poor non-responders. We have also seen in several independent studies 
the long-term effect, we have seen that the effect is there for more than seven days. And we have also seen in the toxicology program that was finalized uh, this spring that it was really good results, a very clean toxicology uh, program. Uh, and all these R&D research that has been going on for, for, for these years have uh, made us check all the boxes needed. And we have uh, in August now started our first in human study. So a, a phase one study that is actually ongoing now as we speak at um, the University Hospital in Uppsala, where our partner CTO has its clinic. And we are also very encouraged about that um, the many medical and scientific uh, experts around the world, key opinion leaders, acknowledge what we are doing, our results. We have, for example, Dr. Harim Padman Nathan, who has been active in this field since Viagra in over 30 years. He has been sort of a part in all uh, drug development that has been going on in this field since then. And he says that Lib01 promises to shift the management paradigm of erectile dysfunction, the first revolutionary molecule to enter the field since Viagra. Very encouraging. And we also have uh, Professor Francois Gano, uh, that says that he's confident that our candidate is effective. He has seen the results very close. And um, we also have um, someone says this, this could be a really game changer to have a bi-weekly or once a week medication. Besides um, key opinion leaders that are supporting us globally, uh, we of course have a global agenda for the drug development itself. This it tends to be a product on the global market. And uh, we also uh, already now are, are uh, engaging um, development suppliers around the world. For example, Thermo Fisher is the one who have been uh, GMP manufacturing our study drug. Uh, but uh, as many others have talked about here today also, we have the business strategy to enter partnerships with the bigger, more established pharma companies to facilitate the drug development. And also, of course, a very important part of the financing uh, strategy. Uh, we also uh, work a lot, of, a lot with patents. Uh, besides two already granted patent family, we have uh, a few patent application that has been sent in and there are more to come to extend and broadening the, uh, the patents around the globe. Um, and we also um, intensify, intend to intensify this sort of internationalization of the company now this autumn and we were granted um, monetary um, um, support from uh, Almi to do this, so that we were really happy about. And uh, I, I also wanted to share a little bit of what is going on right now as we speak uh, at DICOT. So uh, to get a glimpse on that, uh, we have, uh, of course, the phase one study now ongoing, which is a main focus now. Uh, the, last, uh, the first dose group have now been dosed. So th that is very good. Uh, we are also uh, aiming, of course, to have a speed in the drug development, and we are already now planning for the next clinical phase. So we're also now uh, looking at how that study design for phase 2A, how that should be. We are uh, working on financing also. We had a very successful rights issue uh, earlier on this year with um, two uh, series of warrants. And we have the second and final um, uh, warrant uh, coming up in November, subscription period in November. Uh, and we of course want to repeat the success we have had uh, earlier on in the rights issue and the earlier warrant. So um, what else to pick here? We are, I've talked a lot about erectile dysfunction here today and that is the indication we are focusing on. Uh, but we also have seen in the early academic research that um, this molecule seems to 
to have an effect also on an other indication called premature ejaculation. Uh, so that is also something we are looking into how we should in the best way explore that. Um, yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Elin. Do we have any questions? Yeah. We do? <laughs> Old faithful down here on the left. <laughs> I can't refrain from annoying you with my standing question. How does it work? Mm. What is the mechanism? Yes. That is a very good and important question. And uh, besides, I mean, the clinical uh, study that is now ongoing, that is, of course, a major um, focus for us to, to really understand how it works. Um, so I, I will come back as soon as we can say more about it, for sure. But there have been some interview studies, if I remember correctly, done with people who have used it in the folk use sense of mm. in Madagascar, if I'm not incorrect. Mm. What did you take from those studies? Just because I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, about the long lasting effect. Uh, and uh, in the interviews, it also came out that, I mean, it seems to have a very good um, safety pro profile. So no, I mean, side effects were reported there. Uh, and I mean, it was a very commonly used uh, uh, thing there. And so how do they use it? They drink it? Yeah, yeah. they drink it. They drink yes. it. Okay. But, but I want to underline that we have nothing to do with Madagascar now. So no. we have a semi-synthetic version of this molecule yes. that we can now scale up, etc. So, yeah. Yeah, so looking at the phase one study now, um, are you just looking at the safety or will you be able to take some, will you be able to measure some effect or, or how are you going about that? Uh, this phase one study is uh, primarily focused on the safety profile. So that is the, the primary objective to study the safety profile uh, in humans. Yeah, sure. And uh, looking at the uh, the long-lasting effect, I mean, you stopped at seven days because that's how you designed the the study. Would would it make sense to make more studies then to see if it can last even longer, or would that not make sense? What's your thought about that? No, that will definitely be be explored uh, in the clinical development to see how long it lasts and how you can, I mean, optimize the dosing regimen, etc to get uh, as long duration as possible. All right, all right. So you said bi-weekly perhaps, or could it extend even further based on what you have seen or what you think? Yeah, I mean, what we have seen is that the effect seems to increase over time during these seven days that we have studied. So um, we believe that it can last uh, more, much longer than that. And it seems like people are kind of keen on this reaching the market by, by the looks of the quotes from the KOLs. But is there anything else that is also exciting that you're competing with? Or are you like the only thing with any, well, how is the competition right now? Um, I mean, as said, there's not so much going on in this area. There is a Danish company called Initiato Pharma that is also addressing ED as an indication. Um, but no, I would say it's, it's uh, and, and the profile of our molecule is, is completely unique, what we can see. And uh, on the other indication, the premature ejaculation, uh, will that be part of the phase two, or will that be a separate track that you're pursuing, or how will you deal with that? Mm, that is also a very good question. We are looking into that right now, because we, we said that we wanted to start the clinical phase one, focusing on ED, and then we will... Uh, have some more time and resources to look at PE. So I cannot, uh, we don't know right now, so we will have to look into that, what is the best way forward. I had a final question, which is more of a broader question, because you said since Viagra, basically, there's been no new innovations to reach the market. It's not because it was seen that there was no point, because Viagra was so good, so it was the end of that game, or mm. is it particularly difficult to address this indication? That is also a good question. Uh, I mean, we haven't seen so many drug candidates ha that have reached so far. Uh, and I think the, the, the big companies like, like Pfizer and Bayer who have, have worked on this indication earlier, 
they have been focusing on other indications for some time. So I think also it's a matter of strategic focus on in, in big pharmas. So um, yeah, but, but we will see, maybe, I mean, the, the focus will increase. Uh, it's a lot to do, huge right. medical need for new drugs. Yeah. Let's hope so. Well, thank you so much, Elin, for your presentation. You. Oh. Oh. Okay, if you have a short one, we yeah. will let you take it. <laughs> in this indigenous population in Madagascar, was this uh, concoction only used by men or even by women? Uh, it was reported that the woman used it as well, in some degree. On that note, mm? thank you. Thank you. <laughs>